Okay, guys, uh, this is a custom factory I.O. scene that I did. Uh, you do this by using these blocks over here and putting drag and drop all these modules and putting them the way you want them. So I did this customization so I can show you how to use encoders and shift registers on this application. Uh, in order to use encoders, you need to stop factory I.O. from running, click on the conveyor, right click, and then select use encoder. So I need encoders for uh, two things over here. So let me go ahead and run this simulation so you can see why do I need encoders and pulses and chief registers uh, on this specific project. So let me go ahead and, and run it. Uh, right now I'm online with my uh, Siemens TIA portal version 16. Um, already, uh, con uh, I've already fired up my PLC over here, simulator, simulator. And I'm gonna go ahead and run it for a while to see how everything looks. Uh, Okay, before I run it on the emitter, right now the parts that I'm choosing to emit are only boxes, but I also doing the green raw material. This is like a green box that is going to run. Uh, the objective is that all boxes should fall down this ramp. Uh, over here, these two ramps and uh, that one in the middle will be reserved for large boxes and this pusher over here this pusher has to actuate and push the large boxes down this ramp and on this other ramp I'm using this one for the smaller boxes uh, those they don't need to be they just go run all the way down the conveyor moving with through this curve conveyor and then falling down the ramp as for the green boxes the tiny ones well those have to be picked up by this uh, pick and place and put and dropped in this ramp so in order for me to do that i had to use encoder because i have no idea where along my conveyor these green boxes are going to land. So let me just, uh, you know, run it for a little while and uh, go ahead and explain things later, okay? Let me reset everything. And go ahead and run it. Here they get weighted. This is a weight a balance uh, conveyor, a scale conveyor. That's why they have to stop by one second, two seconds, in order to be uh, weighted. This is where I got my, my weight, my weight count. Alright, the green ones, they have to be picked in place with these suction cups. Um, while the uh, sequence is taking place, everything over here has to stop. Large box, they have to be pushed down with a pusher, and for that, I need an encoder to tell me where my boxes are located along my conveyor. So let me go ahead and the uh, let me put it, this in pause. While I show you the code, I'm going to uh, on this video. 
I am going to put a link so you can download the code and play with it. Right now, I'm using on my Mac, on my, uh, let's go over here and take a look at the encoders uh, subroutine, my OB. Uh, on my encoder subroutine, I have three chief registers left. One is moving. Uh, every time I see an encoder pulse, I'm moving and shifting my bits along this uh, long word, which is 64 bits. So I'm moving each one of them as the pulses of the encoders are coming. Let me show you where that, uh, where that, that thing is, uh, where you can see these, uh, these values. Uh, right here, I have encoder 1A, face A, and face B. These two over here. I'm gonna turn it on so you can see it blinking. Right here, you see how this blinks? That's the encoder pulses. On my code, I'm only using I'm only using uh, phase A because I don't need uh, those two uh, pulses. They're going way too fast for my simulator to detect uh, both both signals. So detecting one signal is good enough. So this is what I do my shift register, and this is where I put every time I see every single boxes along my conveyor or every single part I'm, go, I'm going to go ahead and put a number one on my chief register and I do the same thing when I see a tall box over here and also when I see one of my green boxes the little ones I check my vision sensor I have a vision sensor right over here that is telling me right now it's looking at a, at a green part so the value on my green sensor has to be four. See over here? That's what I'm, I'm looking for over here. If I see number four, I'm gonna go ahead and, 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 and activate this bit, which uh, uh, puts a number one on my shift register, on my shift register word, all right? That's it. So let me go ahead and um, um, play it again. for a while, see how everything moves. Okay, the pusher right over here when you see a large box, it activates uh, my location. Uh, if you see, this is the uh, my conveyor, it's pretty long, six meters. So I have to keep track of my shift registered word, and when my bit number, I think bit number thirty-two, activates which is right over here on my pick and place uh, subroutine. I'm looking for, once I activate my conveyors and everything, I get my done bit for my shop, my uh, function blocks. But over here, this is my bit of word for my chief register uh, long word. When my bit 32 activates, that's when I start my pick and place uh, subroutine. And as for the pusher, the pusher, it's right over here. Where is my pusher? Hello, little pusher. 
Mm -hmm. Right over here. All right, my pusher subroutine. Uh, this uh, basically uh, this is my function block to uh, activate my pusher, and it gets activated on my main function blocks right above uh, above my pick and place uh, my I'm sorry right below my pusher uh, function blocks uh, which already you saw the code uh, over here the same thing happens I use my chief register word um, when my bit 15 gets activated then I go ahead and command my pusher which is this sub, uh, function blocks with my bit start which is right over here uh, this is my start of, of, or, or my commanding of this function block to run so why do I use uh, bit 15 because when I see uh, this uh, a large box coming through here as you notice, the low, uh, the low, uh, low profile box goes through without being activated. You see, but the big one, boom! When they get activated, I start shifting bits until I get bit number fifteen. So, as the encoder pulses are received by my chief register instructions, each bit gets activated one at a time. Until I, re until I reach bit uh, 15 right over here this one over here 15 so which is more or less close to my pusher uh, flange a face and that's when I get the uh, pusher sequence uh, uh, I started guys this is it I'm going to put the code a link so you can download the code and play with it uh, remember um, every time I uh, create a function block and I make the uh, instantiation which is uh, I drag and drop one of my function block into this main subroutine I have the choice to use let me do it again so you can see it. hold on one second let me let's take um let's say that I have another pusher on my factory IO instead of one I put let's say I put another one over here another pusher another device well I'm not gonna program again that sequence you know a retracted extended taking care of the sensors and everything that programming is already done right over here it's called pusher right but what about if I put another device on my conveyor another pusher well what I do is drag and drop this code over here let me do it uh, down here I'm gonna drag and drop you see inside my main routine and then Siemens at uh, portal is asking me if I want single instance or multi multi instance I rather choose multi instance because that way I don't have to create another data blocks for this pusher so that's why you only see one two data blocks on my uh, on this sub uh, this uh, project uh, that way I don't cl clutter clutter my my uh, project tree with uh, lots of data blocks so that's why it is a good idea to use multi-instance that way the data blocks it's uh, behind the scene and it's called by my main function blocks my main function blocks is the one responsible of holding all this data uh, for the new uh, pusher here so uh, all right guys I gotta go this is a pretty long uh, video and um, see you next time thank you ciao ciao